Today, I would like to discuss the impending squeeze in AMC. I want to explore the various indicators and peculiar occurrences that strongly suggest a significant squeeze is imminent. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. Let's begin with the recent tweet from a prominent investor who questioned Doug Sifu's motives. This investor couldn't comprehend the risk-reward balance for Sifu, particularly his condescending attitude towards retail investors and denial of the existence of synthetic shares. It's perplexing to understand why these market manipulators and shills would go to such lengths to convince you to sell your shares if synthetic shoring didn't exist. We must grasp the importance of assessing the risk-reward ratio. Content creators like myself and the mast investor, as well as other influencers such as TMI, find the risk-reward ratio sensible because we provide accurate information and facts to our audience. We are compensated for our time through YouTube advertisements and affiliate signups. However, it doesn't make sense for the shills to continuously engage in such activities unless they are being remunerated for spreading false information and persuading you to sell your shares. Doug Sifu, in particular, doesn't gain financially from these efforts. In fact, he potentially loses millions of dollars every day by diverting his attention away from his own business. Each hour he spends on Twitter is an hour not devoted to his company, resulting in substantial financial losses. Hence, it's baffling to witness individuals like Doug Saifu, that girl trader Amy and Spence, along with other shills, continuously posting tweets unless they are being financially rewarded or attempting to avert market maker bankruptcies. Peter Han's tweet emphasizes that the DTCC, which is meant to have comprehensive knowledge, is not aware of all positions. Shorts can create positions in one location and pass them on to other offices around the world without necessarily informing the DTCC. The DTCC operates on trust, assuming that accurate data is being submitted and that it is being reviewed properly. However, the reality is that they are underfunded and often fail to thoroughly review the data submissions, leading to potential errors and misrepresentations going unnoticed. As Peter stated, there are undisclosed risk positions that regulators remain unaware of. Furthermore, Doug Saifu's credibility is questionable due to his firm's history of fines from FINRA. In fact, just two weeks ago, the SEC charged an investment firm for engaging in synthetic short selling, which according to some is deemed impossible. Anyone dismissing the existence of naked short selling and labeling it as a diluted fantasy is likely a paid disinformationalist. It is puzzling to see Doug Saifu wasting time and money interacting with YouTubers and regular retail investors, unless these tweets play a pivotal role in saving his company. That's why I choose to ignore shill comments on my YouTube channel and Twitter. It simply doesn't make sense for them to consistently post shill comments unless they are financially incentivized or attempting to prevent market maker bankruptcies. The extensive tweeting from these shills and individuals like Doug Saifu can be attributed to the imminent AMC squeeze. In my previous video, I mentioned that AMC was once again on the threshold securities list, and this trend continued for consecutive days. Moreover, the cost of borrow fee has soared since then. Yesterday, I showed you a cost of borrow fee of around 200%, but within a day, it has already surged to 406%. The average cost of borrowing is 406%, with a maximum of 478% and a minimum of 398%. This doubling of the cost of borrowing fee in just one day illustrates the increasing difficulty for shorts to maintain their positions. There will come a point where even Doug Saifu's shill tweets cannot save virtue and Citadel from bankruptcy. As Troy highlighted, being on the threshold list multiple times this year suggests that retail investors are holding on to their shares, making them harder to locate. Despite the lower trading volume, we are not witnessing an increase in fail-to-deliver situations. 
This indicates that we are holding while they are failing to settle their positions. Their strategy involves passing a small basket of shares between market makers to temporarily remove stocks from the threshold securities list. However, this approach fails to address the underlying problem of synthetic shares amounting to hundreds of millions, if not billions. It's worth noting that several individual apes have had their Twitter accounts suspended simultaneously for a specific duration. This coordinated action is an attempt to stifle our voices and persuade us to sell our shares, further reinforcing the proximity of the squeeze. Concurrently, Robinhood recently laid off a significant percentage of its workforce, indicating financial struggles. Despite introducing 24-hour trading, Robinhood is grappling with increasing daily losses. The possibility of Robinhood going bankrupt could potentially trigger a squeeze or at least cause a price surge in AMC and GameStop, which may lead to the eventual squeeze. The bankruptcy proceedings could also unveil Robinhood's associated parties and shed light on the extent of their financial arrangements with firms like Citadel for payment for order flow transactions. Additionally, the confidential emails that emerged during the bankruptcy proceedings could provide valuable insights. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.